Zayd was a common name amongst the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another Zayd who was known as Zayd ibn Thabit radiyallahu an. He was from al Madinah al munawwara and he was from amongst the Ansar. He was approximately 11 or 12 years old when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the hijra to Madinah munawwara and he had accepted Islam being an orphan with the rest of his family on that particular day. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a dua for him. So he was a young boy, age of approximately 11 when he accepted Islam. And he had gone with his family to see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he had come to Medina Munawwara just after the hijrah. And this is when he accepted Islam. Zayd ibn Thabit ibn al-Dahak al-Ansari radiyallahu anhu. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. He was a person whom Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a dua of goodness for as he accepted Islam and he was quite young. So a few years later, approximately two years later, the battle of Badr took place. So Zayd ibn Thabit as a young boy decided to come with his sword and as some of the other Sahaba did as well who were of his age, they came and they wanted to take part and go out with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very strict when it came to ensuring that those who were under age do not take part. So he looked at Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari radiallahu an, and because he was only very young at the time, he told him, you cannot participate with us. And Zayd ibn Thabit was quite sad. In fact, he cried and his mother was also quite saddened because he's he could not participate in that particular battle and that was the battle of Badr. The same happened at the battle of Uhud. But this did not deter them from serving Islam in a different way. So he spoke to his mother. He says, Oh my mother, I want to serve Islam and I want to serve it in a big way. So the mother says, why don't you start learning things? Why don't you start memorizing as much of the Quran as you can and you start learning. So when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned, they went to meet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his mother told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this son of mine, Zayd ibn Thabit, radiallahu an, he writes very well and he reads as one of the better of those who read. So he reads and writes very well and he has memorized 17 surahs of the Quran already, subhanallah. And he was quite young and he reads very well just like you would read O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as though the Quran is descending meaning powerful recitation so Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam decided to test him subhanallah and the young boy read and he read from a few places in the Quran and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam found him to be even better than the description that the mother and the others had actually made of him this was Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu an. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, O oh Zayd, and he was a young boy, I want you to learn the Hebrew language. Zayd ibn Thabit, I want you to learn the Hebrew language because we have communication with those who speak Hebrew from amongst the Jews and so on. We need someone trustworthy who knows and who knows that we will not be cheated or conned and nobody would misinterpret what they have written and what we have written and so on. So do you know what happened? Something surprising. Two weeks later, the young boy comes back. How long later? 15 days. He comes back. He says, Oh, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have learned Hebrew and I have mastered it completely. I know every aspect of the language. So he could write it, he could read it, he could speak it, he could understand it, and he could communicate very well in it. Subhanallah, what a gift. Blessed Sahabi. Granted a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He went to learn a language and 15 days later he comes back and he knows it completely thoroughly inside out, upside down. Subhanallah. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to use him to write the letters. And then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, there is another language that I want you to learn. It is the language known as Syrianiya, Syriac. Allahu Akbar. It is a dialect of Aramaic. 
He came back 17 days later and he said, Oh Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I've mastered that language too. Amazing. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Man ta'allama lughata qawmin amina sharrahum. Whoever learns the language of people will be protected from any harm that is intended against them by people of that language. You know, sometimes we go somewhere and in Malaysia, what happens is people look very different. You have different colors and sizes and shapes and everything else. So when you walk in and people think you're a foreigner and a stranger and they start speaking in your language without knowing you actually know the language and they say so many things about you and on your way out, you just greet them and say one or two words and they go as red as tomatoes. Have you noticed that? Subhanallah. It has happened with me where people do not believe you come from Zimbabwe. So they start speaking in the Shona language, not realizing that, hey, you know what? I speak the same language, subhanallah. And after a while, they, they are shocked out of their subhanallah skins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to learn languages. Brothers and sisters, remember, learn as many languages as you can. With us sometimes at school, we learned the French language, for example. But we learn it for four years. And when we come back, the most we can say is comment ça va, ça va bien, and that's it. And that's four years you studied it and you have a certificate in, in French. Come on, can't you speak? These were the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Learning languages is some of the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He taught his companions. Here is Zayd ibn Thabit ibn al-Tahak radiyallahu an. And this was the power that Allah had blessed him with. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose him to write revelation. When Jibreel alayhi salam after that used to come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam with revelation, he used to call Zayd ibn Thabit. Oh Zayd, come and write down what Jibreel alayhi salam has come with. And he used to write them on various skins and, and different types of uh, paper and skins and parchments that they used to write on that they had at the time. So this was Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari radiallahu an, also known as Katibu Wahyi Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, person who used to write revelation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or of the Quran that used to come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then on the day of Tabuk, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him one of the flags of the Muslimin. So as young as he was, he participated in the battle of Tabuk and he participated also in Khandaq and various other battles. When Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was being appointed as a Khalifa after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa there was a discussion that happened between the Ansar and the Muhajireen. As the Ansar, the people of Medina wanted to appoint Sa'd ibn Ubadah radiallahu anhu. So Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu was the first from amongst the Ansar or one of the first from amongst the Ansar who stretched his hand and pledged allegiance to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an because he said, Oh my people, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a muhajir. So we keep the khilafah in the muhajirin and we are the Ansar and the helpers and we will help the Khalifa. Here is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an and I pledge my allegiance to him. Amazing. This was Zayd ibn Thabit ibn al-Dhahak al-Ansari radiallahu an. Also at the time of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an and the time of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an, we spoke about how the Quran was brought together and how at the time of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, they used only one manuscript and they used only one type of writing, one dialect. The man responsible for doing all this was Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari, one of the top reciters of the Quran at the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Whenever you pick up the Quran that you have nowadays, the Quran we have, whenever you pick it up, you need to remember Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari. He is involved in what we have today. He was the one. And this is why you hear the top reciters, Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari, Ubay ibn Ka'b, Ali ibn Abi Talib. These were top readers from amongst the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and they had memorized the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good memory, and may He make us from those who can learn and understand. So he was the one, subhanallah, at the time of the companions, he was known as the one who had the most knowledge of the Quran or from amongst those who had the most. If you recall a few days ago, we spoke about a man known as Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an, also very young and he grew up. He was the cousin of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what happened is one day Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari radiallahu anhu was coming out of his home and jumping onto his conveyance, his animal. And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu assisted him and started holding the reins of the animal and helping him to go and to walk. So Zayd ibn Thabit says, Oh, relative of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Subhanallah, oh cousin of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how can I allow this to happen to you? 
How can I allow you to do this to my animal? He says, you have taught me. You are one of those who've taught me. And this is how we have been taught to respect and to look after those who have taught us some knowledge. So Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari radiallahu anhu says, can I have a look at what's that on your hand? So he says, what is it? And he gave him his hand and that's when he kissed his hand. Subhanallah. And then Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu immediately said, what are you doing? He says, this is what I've been taught to do to the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are a man. You are related so closely to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the ability to respect those who have taught us. Also, he was one of those who had lots of knowledge regarding the laws of inheritance. So much so that there are certain rules and regulations governing the laws of inheritance. And the distribution of Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari is very well known. In fact, there are some of those rulings known as Zaydiyat al-Arba. The four major rulings of Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari radiallahu an. This is in the laws of Fara'id or inheritance. May Allah make us from those who understand the laws of inheritance and apply them in a way that we earn paradise. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whosoever applies the laws of inheritance that Allah has decreed shall earn paradise. The Quran makes mention of these verses. These are the laws of Allah speaking about the laws of inheritance and whoever follows Allah and his messenger, we will grant him paradise and whoever discards and disregards the laws of inheritance. Allah says they shall be doomed into hellfire. May that not happen to us brothers and sisters. One of the biggest tests we have in our lives is whether or not we adopt the laws of inheritance when we are about to die or when we have when we are writing our wills may Allah make it easy for us and grant us paradise so this man subhanallah he passed away at the time of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiallahu an and the day he passed away Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an who was amongst those who was crying and he says wallahi today with the burial of Zayd ibn Thabit we have buried so much of the knowledge that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us this was the man he was the same man at the time of the death of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu called him to write the name of of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu to take as khilafah or as a successor after the death of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu may Allah bless them all and grant us all some of the goodness and may Allah protect us all from evil ameen Brothers and sisters, that was Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari radiallahu an, And that was one of the great companions who was just a young boy in Medina Munawwara when he accepted Islam upon the hijrah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.